According to psychiatry, one of the strongest signs that you've got bipolar disorder is when you start having delusions. And for them, any delusion is caused by a chemical imbalance, which will most likely need medication for your entire life. However, when you take a close look at the type of delusions that people have, many of them, which are very, very common among bipolar people, are often very spiritual in nature. Now, I've already introduced a few of these so-called delusions in the video, Is Bipolar Mania Spiritual Enlightenment? So what I wanted to do in this video was just let you in on what I think are the roots of some of these delusions and why they're so common. And as you'll see, in my opinion, most of the so-called delusions are hardly the random connections of a broken brain, but come out of the complex relationship between your soul and your ego. Probably the most common delusion for people entering into psychosis for the very first time is to think that they are either dead or dying. And they should, because in a very real way, they are. You see, as I mentioned in the first video in this series, The Real Cause of Bipolar Disorder, the cause of an acute psychosis will always be the collapse of your ego, or false self. But what I didn't talk about is simply what it feels like when this false self, or ego collapse, occurs. First, you feel totally different, completely unlike the self you have come to know your entire life. And a part of that self has been your false self, which is made up of all the thoughts and ideas that you have known yourself to be. That's the ego part of you. So then during the ego collapse, when all of this false self just seems to leave you on what I can best describe as an energetic level, you feel so unlike you've ever felt that it's easy to assume, as I did, that you're in fact dead or dying. And in a way, a part of you is. If your psychosis completes itself in a healthy way, much of your false self or ego will die, and what you'll be left with is a feeling that you are much lighter and less boxed in than you were before. After thinking that you're dead or dying, thinking that you're Jesus or some type of Messiah is probably the second most common delusion. Now, why would so many people think that? Well, don't forget that when the ego or false self collapses, what you're left with is your true self or soul. You see, when our ego is in control of things, we have this inner feeling that somehow we're not good enough, that somehow we need to better ourselves in order to justify our existence. And to do that, we need to be something that we're not. And this is the ambition of the ego, our false self, to build ourself up in almost like an artificial way. Then, when that ego drops, how do we feel? We feel perfect, limitless, sacred. So in a sense, we're actually trading one delusion, the delusion of the ego that actually we suck, for something that's quite the opposite. And so engulfed in this feeling of perfection and sacredness, and without the rational egoic mind there to tell us otherwise, it's very easy to jump to the conclusion that we have become Jesus, our culture's strongest symbol of sacredness and perfection. And now it's true not everybody thinks of themselves as Jesus. People from other religious traditions or cultural backgrounds often identify with another religious figure. For example, people of the Islamic tradition might identify with Muhammad or see themselves as another prophet. But this idea of being the Messiah is by far the strongest image. And for women, if they don't see themselves as the Messiah or Jesus, they'll see themselves as actually giving birth to the Messiah, being the mother of Jesus or the Messiah. The third delusion is that we're somehow all-knowing. One sensation that most of us have in our everyday reality is that we never quite seem to know enough. Have you ever noticed that? It's as if no matter what we do, we just can't figure life out without more information. However, once again, when that ego collapses, we're left with this emotional intuition of the soul, which is telling us that everything is as it should be. And in that moment, there's this sensation of completeness. And with that completeness comes this sense of a perfect knowledge, a sense that you know everything there is to know, and yet somehow you can't explain it in words. It's as if you're having one giant nuclear aha moment. And so, considering that you feel that you're a sacred messiah and have this perfect all-knowing information, what's to do? Save the world, of course! At this point, many people seem to become obsessed with certain social issues like homelessness, poverty, the greenhouse effect, this sort of thing. And then others, including Dr. David Lukoff, felt the compulsion to write their own religious text. 
The Jim Carrey movie, The Truman Show, is probably the most common reference that I've heard when asking people what psychosis is like. And this really shouldn't come as a surprise, because once the ego collapses, not only do our senses become more alive, but we also become more sensitive to other people, better able to read how they're feeling. And among the first things that you'll notice while you're in psychosis about the so-called normal people around you is that to some extent, pretty much everybody is acting, meaning that they're all hiding their true emotions, trying their best to fit into the role that they've sought out in society. And so seeing the world in this way, it's very easy to start to believe that you're in a movie, especially one like The Truman Show, where everybody is obviously fake and acting. And yet for many people, at the same time, there's also the sensation that everything is just perfect, just the way it is. The psychiatrist, the hospital, Many people in mania head for the psychiatric hospital willingly, thinking, I'll be perfectly fine, it's all part of God's plan, and everything is happening and unfolding as it's meant to happen. And in this way, the sense of being in a movie is not a whole lot different than what was written about life thousands of years ago in the ancient Hindu scripts of India, the Vedas, where it is written that life is a divine play. Number six is seeing people as angels or demons. Now even though the experience can be very sacred, it can also be very confusing and often we're not sure of what to do next and we're very often looking for help. But when we start looking for help, we're not looking for the person in charge or the name tag of somebody. No, we're looking for people who are going to love us. And to figure that out, we're going to look a person straight in the eyes. And if their face is open and we see love in those eyes, then we will see an angel before us. However, if that person looks at us judgmentally, analyzing, trying to control and manipulating us, invalidating this sacred experience, then we see a demon and we want nothing to do with them. To me, the most remarkable delusion people have is the sense that they're being tested by God. And with everybody, the test is remarkably the same. Are you going to continue to live on this material plane of reality? Or are you going to choose a higher spiritual dimension of existence? And in that choice, maybe you're just saving yourself. But in some situations, some people feel that in making that decision, they're saving their family or even the entire planet. And in making that choice, in order to choose the higher dimension, it will feel like a form of ritualized suicide to the person. But not really in the sense of wanting to end your life and end the pain of existence, but rather in sacrificing your life for the greater good, much like Jesus allowed himself to be crucified rather than trying to escape. Now some of these attempts appear quite subtle to the point of being absurd, but others can be quite dangerous, which re-emphasizes my point that if you're going to try and go through a psychosis, that two people should be supporting and protecting you at all times. For me, it was simply switching off a hotel light switch, which was going to bring my personal annihilation. For my niece, it meant trying to jump through her apartment window. And then there was one guy I know who tried to take everybody on the airplane that he was flying in into the higher spiritual dimension by flushing the toilet in the airplane bathroom. And as crazy as these actions sound, not one of us is medicated today. So looked at this way, is it any wonder that life begins to look like a dream? Is it any wonder that we start to test reality? Because when we're in an acute psychosis, we are Alice and we have gone way down the rabbit hole. So to sum up, rather than being caused by the chemical imbalance of a malfunctioning brain, all of these so-called delusions represent your reality from your non-ordinary state of consciousness, and in that sense, they're not delusions at all. In fact, I see them as the birth of something quite profound, the awakening of our Christ consciousness. And as with any birth, this process can be quite messy and difficult as well. Once the ego comes back online, some people are quite frightened and terrified of what just happened to them. Others feel even more alienated in this world and have a deep desire to go back to the other side. And then others are simply unable to let go of the experience, having what's normally called delusions of grandeur. Here, people don't remember their experience symbolically as the awakening to their own Christ consciousness, 
No, with delusions of grandeur, people see their experience concretely, that they are the Christ and superior to all others. However, it's my belief that, again, with loving support and a little guidance, people with these delusions can gradually understand that the true power of the awakening of their Christ consciousness comes when you're able to recognize the Christ consciousness in others and truly connect with other people in a more open and loving way. And when that happens, the spiritual evolution of someone with bipolar disorder becomes the spiritual evolution of all of us. And special thanks to my friends at newlightbeings.com for sharing their stories with me so that I could put this video together.